My name is Malcolm Short and I'm the Technical Support Manager for LUK. Today I want to talk about dual mass flywheels and how important they are to vehicle manufacturers in reducing torsional vibration on today's modern engines. First of all, the name, dual mass flywheel. Essentially, the important thing is there are two masses. Half of it is attached to the gearbox with the clutch and the other half is bolted to the crankshaft. Now that has a very important benefit. It lowers the resonant frequency of the powertrain from somewhere around 2000 RPM, max torque, down to somewhere much below idle speed, in fact around 300 RPM. That's a major benefit. We have some components inside the flywheel we need to look at. I'm going to do that now. Inside the primary mass, we have what we call a drive plate. That, in fact, is riveted to the secondary mass, which is attached to the clutch in the gearbox. And on it, we have two big ears. Those sit between, in this case, four big arc springs. The arc springs actually absorb an awful lot of vibration between the primary and the secondary mass. They've essentially replaced the clutch driven plate damper springs that you'd have in a conventional clutch plate. In addition, around 50% of our flywheels have what we call a friction control plate. Now that limits the amount of movement of the drive plate during high torque scenarios, when the engine first fires or is cranking, for instance. And that just protects those springs. The drive plate moves with engine vibration in either direction and compresses those springs. In between the two masses, you have a bearing or a bush. And we need to check that for wear. And we also need to check the rotational free play of the flywheel. What that does is it measures the free play or the gap between the spring and the drive plate. And that's an important measurement on how worn the flywheel is. The first thing we need to do is to apply some visual checks. So we're looking at the friction face to see if there's any deep grooves, scoring, bluing or cracking. If you've got any of those evidence, you need to replace the flywheel. The arc springs within the flywheel are actually packed in grease to reduce the friction. Now, some grease loss is acceptable, so a small weeping from the vent holes on the back of the flywheel is quite normal. If you start to get a build-up of grease around the bell housing, then it needs to be replaced. That's too much. The next test is a free play test, and we need to apply the dual mass flywheel special tool to check that. The dual mass flywheel special tool comes with all the components you need to test our flywheels. It comes with flywheel locking dogs to lock the primary mass into position. All the adapters that you need to fit our flywheels. The long handle with the degree gauge on it and the DTI. First thing we need to do is to measure the gap between the two springs is we need to find the first spring. So we turn it anti-clockwise until we can feel the spring. Compress it and allow it to return. Now we zero the degree gauge by moving the pointer. And then we want to turn the flywheel in the opposite direction to find the other edge of the spring. So we turn it clockwise. Now on some of our flywheels with a friction control plate, you may feel a hard thud. That's perfectly normal. A lot of people think that's a faulty flywheel. It's not. So overcome the friction control plate by continuing to turn it a few degrees at a time until you can feel that spring, allow it to return and then take a reading from the degree plate, in this case 14 degrees. The next important check is to check the bearing or the bush between the two masses for wear. To do this we use the DTI which is included in the kit we need to locate it onto one of the adapters. To test the rock, we apply the DTI to one of the adapters, preload it, gently pull the handle and set our zero on our DTI, and then by gently rocking it from side to side, we can measure the amount of free play in the bearing or bush. When checking for rock, it's important that you only use your finger and your thumb. You don't need to apply too much load. If you do, you run the risk of damaging the bearing or getting an inaccurate figure. Secondly, we are checking for rock and not end float. 
Some of our flywheel designs use a bush and you can get up to six millimetres of end floating nose and that's perfectly normal. That's not something you'll get with the bearing type where you won't have any end float. So it is rock and not end float. Once you've measured those two important values, it's important to find out what the maximum values for your particular flywheel is, because they do vary quite a bit. We've produced this handy data wheel that gives you a list of all of our flywheel part numbers, what the maximum free play is, what the maximum rock is, and whether it's fitted with a friction control plate or not. Those are available from your local motor factor. Um, that concludes our presentation today. Thanks for watching.